Hey fam, another reason uh, not to eat fast food. And one of the worst, worst places uh, for a fast food restaurant to eat from is McDonald's, who uh, has been under so much scrutiny, uh, have had so much uh, dialogue pertaining to how the food is not real and uh, that they're mixing all kind of stuff in it. But uh, let's take a look at this video right here uh, behind the scenes. Well, time now for the morning stir and McDonald's, as you've never seen it before this morning, revealing secrets to some of your favorite menu, menu items for the first time. And ABC's Gio Benita has got an exclusive, unprecedented access inside the fast food giant's massive operation. It's that iconic burger joint. McDonald's serving millions of Americans for more than 70 years with that famous smile. That clown right there, that Ronald McDonald, that clown always looked weird to me. <laughs> weird. <laughs> I guess they uh, got the clown there to show that they clowning us with this fake ass food. All right, let's go. But for long, some customers haven't been smiling, questioning how their food is produced, a process most of us have never seen until right now. So this is it. This is the first time you're letting any television crew in here. Yes, this is the first time. Wow. And you know, if they're letting them in now, uh, of course, they're not going to show us uh, the real deal. They're going to show us what they want to show us uh, so that you can uh, further love going to McDonald's and eating this fake food. Okay, let's go. We're making history. We are walking into one of McDonald's top secret food plants in Fresno, California. Here you are opening your doors to us. Yes. Why? Well, we're starting on a journey called Our Food, Your Questions, and we want to open up the doors and let our customers ask us any questions they have and give them the answers. And it won't be easy. Americans have had tough questions for the mega fast food company. Those questions right in McDonald's latest commercial launching today. I think it's disgusting. Does McDonald's even sell real food? We suit up in sterile wear to see it for ourselves. So this is what we call beef trim. Okay. And it comes from familiar cuts that you may know. Like What I want to know is why y'all have on them industrial gloves like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it is the meat poison or is you doing it to be safe from the meat or are you doing it to keep the meat clean? Anyway, it looks scary. Chuck and Ram. McDonald's says the patties are 100% beef. The recipe, they say, is nothing more than a blend of leaner beef trim and fattier trim. Just like you would get at the grocery store, you buy like an 80-20 right. um, blend. The beef is ground, blended together, made into those famous patties. Letting the public see the salt can be risky. But with so many people on social media able to affect a company's image, experts say transparency is key. I think McDonald's is deciding to lift the curtain because of market share. Millennials are now driving the food bus and they're heading straight. Okay. I just wanted to say, did you see the throat on that one right there? I saw it. <laughs> okay. And millennials want to lift the curtain. First of all, why is food top secret? Why is any place serving uh, the public food, uh, how they serving it, uh, what they're putting in it, how they're making it? Why is that top secret? Top secret and food should not be uh, two things that go together of other establishments that are offering better, healthier fare, and they're trying to catch up. So this morning, we go right to the chief brand officer for McDonald's. Uh, do you think that now this is perhaps something that's being done to improve those earnings? It's not linked to the business performance at all. It's linked to making sure that our customers truly know the story about McDonald's food. And there are going to be families who are still going to say, right. you know what, the food at McDonald's is just not healthy yeah. enough. I won't feed it to my kids. Yeah. What do you say? I'd say, you know, don't judge us before you know us. So, starting right now, McDonald's wants you to bombard the company with questions on Twitter and Facebook. And it'll be very interesting to see what this conversation is going to be like, because we're going to see what these other companies might end up doing. There go Robert right there on the left. That's Robert. That's the whole man right there that played like it had breast cancer. <laughs> Robert. Because I think we have a lot of questions for all of them. I, I think a lot of people do. So, you spent a lot of time there. In That's the right. Plant. How clean was it? You know what? That's what really shocked me, Robin, because it was pristine. And yeah. I don't think that it was a show they were putting on for us. Because Exactly. It was a show that they was putting on for them because they knew that this was the first time they was going to let them in the place. So, of course, uh, they probably did some extra special cleaning, you know, because they want to show us that they're really clean. They're really clean while they mix together all of those lab meat, glue, 
uh, all that crap that they put together, dye red up and everything and tell us that it's all 100% beef, uh, like in the grocery store. And we see the meat is dyed up and glued together in the grocery store. So that didn't that didn't help me none at all. Because when we saw the employees walking around wearing that sterile gear, it really looked like this was routine. So it was really... Like I said, get to know them before judging. That's right. No first. All right, Gio, thanks very much. Yeah, what I want to say is um, you can't trust them. You can't trust them, okay? Uh, but let's check this out right here. I found this. I found this right here. Hold on a second. Uh, I found this video after uh, uh, Anthony Truth uh, posted a clip. So I went looking. And uh, found out about these french fries. Look at this family. Look at this. Fast food companies and other food processors um, drive down the cost of food relentlessly and force economies of scale and efficiencies, or what are called efficiencies, on farming. And I'll just give you one example. Um, if you go to McDonald's anywhere in the world, you will find uh, french fries or chips, as you call them, and you will find that they're always made from the same potato, the russet Burbank potato. This is a potato from America that's unusually long and, um, and difficult to grow, and, but that's what they want because uh, when, when you're making, when you're McDonald's, you like those red boxes with a little bouquet of very long chips. Uh, it looks really good. And so they insist that all their potatoes be russet Burbanks, and they further insist that they have no blemishes at all. There's a very common defect of, of russet Burbank potatoes called net necrosis. And you've seen potatoes with a little brown line sometimes or spots that come through it. Well, McDonald's won't buy them if, you, if your potatoes have that. And the only way to eliminate that is to eliminate an aphid. And the only way to do that is with a pesticide called Monitor that is so toxic that the farmers who grow these potatoes in Idaho uh, won't venture outside into their fields for five days after they spray. Uh, Wait. What? It, you hear that? The potatoes are so toxic that they can't even go in the fields to get the potatoes for five days. And this is what they're serving up uh, for the people. Okay. And then when they harvest their potatoes, they, they have to put them in these atmosphere controlled sheds the size of a football stadium what? Uh, because they're not edible for six weeks. What? They have to off gas all the chemicals in them. So you see, the desire for a certain kind of chip leads to a certain... Wait a minute. Hold on. ...of a football stadium uh, because they're not edible for six weeks. They have to off-gas all the chemicals in them. Off-gas. Okay. So you see, the desire for a certain kind of chip leads to a certain kind of agriculture. But the other thing on the health side, when I started learning about nutrition about which, by the way, much less is known than you might think, um, that the scientific understanding of nutrition is still very primitive. Um, but I learned that what mattered most about one's health was not necessarily the nutrients, good or bad, that you were consuming or, or staying away from, or even the calorie counts. But what, what, what predicted a healthy diet more than anything else is the fact that it was being cooked by a human being and not a corporation. Right. Corporations cook very differently than people do. Yes, corporations cook for the multitude. They only want to, uh, they're not with the quality. It's all about the quantity, you know, and that's why uh, they invent food uh, for the people to eat, you know. They uh, put things in the food of animals to make them bigger. They don't care nothing about the health of the animal, <laughs> the health of the human. It's about quantity, getting more out, you know. They don't care about the, the, the human getting obese, uh, filled with hormones and whatever else they inject in these animals with, the plants with, the food with, the vegetables with. It's not about that. It's about getting that poison into the human and getting that money, you know, from them coming and loving the poison. That's what it's all about. They use vast amounts of salt, fat, and sugar, mm -hmm. much more than you would ever use in your own cooking. And the reason they do that is those are three incredibly attractive and incredibly cheap ingredients. And when they're layered properly, as in a, um, uh, a chip or um, you know, various uh, pastries and, and, and forms of junk food, they're incredibly addictive. And in fact, people in the industry, they don't, they don't talk about addiction uh, in the food industry, even though they traffic in addiction, they talk about yes. craveability. 
It's the same thing. Right. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say. Addiction, uh, cravings, it's all the same thing. They already know that you've been programmed uh, from the baby to love uh, salt and sweet. And it's just a matter of mixing that salt and sweet up to, uh, you know, have you crave it. Because they started with that formula that they give you as a baby, the salt and the sweet. And build your taste to what you like. So as you grow, you are drawn to all of the poisons because they taste good. Um, and snackability is another term they use. Yeah. Um, it's a lovely word. Um, anyway, so I, I came to see that cooking has a huge bearing on our health. And in fact, there's been a lot of research in America that shows that even poor women who cook have healthier diets than wealthy women who don't. So you see the usual class bias in the quality of diet is, over, is overtaken by this fact, this key fact. Who's cooking your food? Uh, right. Uh, cooking is always better than the fast food restaurants, you know, and even in cooking, you know, we, we have to be careful. You know, everything is tainted, but we got to go through the tainted shit, <laughs> you know, and find the best things that we can find. And we have to grow our own stuff if we can, where we can, however we can, you know, growing your own food uh, is the best way. In the meantime, don't panic. You know what I'm saying? Eat as healthy as you can. Try to find the best things that you can. Stay the hell away from McDonald's. I believe they have baby burgers. I remember the rabbi talking about it years ago. Everybody thought it was a joke, uh, some more conspiracy theory type shit. Uh, you know what? They don't show us nothing by uh, accident. There is no fucking coincidences. So I take everything that they say literal. Yeah, yeah. And I stay the hell away from McDonald's and all fast foods. And I suggest that you do the same too. Y'all be safe out here. I love you.